When I started playing Rocket League, I made a lot of mistakes, and most of which I had no clue were even happening and holding me back. But after putting 3,000 hours into just playing and multiple thousand more probably coaching, I realized most players out there are making the exact same mistakes I did. So here's my list of 20 rules that if you follow, will make it so that every hour you put into ranked gets you double or triple the amount of improvement it did for me. Also, if you're looking for more ways to accelerate your improvement and YouTube tutorials aren't quite cutting it, I actually run Rocket League's largest live coaching program that specializes in taking plat from champ ranked players up to grand champ in just six weeks or less. When this drops, my program called the Grand Champ Roadmap is actually going to be shutting down to make way for the remastered version called the GCR 2.0. And our newest coach, apparently Jack, is actually going to be hosting a 60 minute live training for everyone in this coming season of the program. So if you're watching between the plat through champ ranks and you want to fast track your progress without having to watch hundreds of YouTube videos on the way, DM me on discord with the keyword now and we can talk details about coaching i'll have my discord first link in the description below plus to celebrate our 2.0 launch i'm giving the first 100 players who dm me a full 100 off the normal cost of enrollment so if you want in on that once again dm me with the keyword now to learn more otherwise enjoy the video guys okay jumping into rules rule number one is avoid the middle path I think a lot of lower ranked players hear that you're supposed to pick up small pads and what they take this to mean is just that they need to move up and down the field along the center to pick up this straight line of boost pads. The problem is this is actually one of the worst ways to move up and down the field. Number one, because if you're going to pick up small pads, you could pick up more along the long hooks. But number two, because it generally just puts you in a weird position on the field. You generally want to rotate across the field and then get behind your teammates. Obviously, picking up boost is good, but focus more on using this long hook and you're going to be in a much better position overall than just rotating up and down the center of the field all the time. Number two, you have to force if you're first man. A super common mistake I see lower rank players make primarily in 3v3 is waiting to challenge or just being hesitant when you have a teammate behind you. And if you kind of just pace around without going for the ball, you're going to clog rotation and end up creating double commits because you didn't challenge. Oftentimes, it's better to just force the ball for your teammate, as in go for it, even if you don't know for certain you're going to win the challenge. That way, your team gets multiple times to actually try to defend the ball, as opposed to you shadowing or buying time when somebody's waiting right behind you. Number three, you want to force high on air dribbles. Most people think is that when somebody air dribbles, you need to go super high into the air to cover if they might take it over you. But the problem is if somebody actually gets under you on an air dribble, it's more dangerous than if you would have just forced them to your backboard and allow your teammate to save it there. If you have a teammate behind you, what you want to do is try to force the opponent to take it to your backboard by covering the low option. That way, if they want to get it by you, they have have to take it over you and your teammate will have an easier save coming off the backboard and that's safer than if you let the person get under you and then they could go for a flip reset or take a 50 50 on your goal line and potentially get the ball by your teammate number four left always goes apparently some of my solo queue teammates don't understand it if you have an identical kickoff spawn the left person always goes unless it's communicated otherwise i didn't make this rule it just is what it is and moving on number five is always hold power slide when you land. This is something that I didn't understand for the longest time, but honestly, this single thing is one of the biggest factors that makes higher ranked players faster than lower ranked ones. Basically, if you land and your car is facing any way not perfectly in line with where it was headed while it was airborne, you're going to lose some amount of speed and you're going to risk spinning out when you land. Instead, if you just make a habit of holding power slide every time you land, or at least tapping it, you're going to conserve more momentum when you land and your recoveries are instantly going to become so much smoother across the board. Number six, don't use the wow quick chat. This is more of a common courtesy thing. Don't don't be that guy that wow quick chats after your teammate makes a mistake. If you're watching this, you know who you are. Don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. Number seven, always wave dash 
off the wall. Basically, if you're ever driving up and down the wall, you should almost always wave dash for a quick speed boost. Many people at the lower ranks know you can do this while you're jumping down off the wall, but a lot don't actually realize you can do this while jumping onto the wall as well. This is something that high ranked 1v1 players do especially well, but basically if you're ever going to climb up onto a wall or down off a wall and you need to cover long distance, there's no reason you shouldn't be wave dashing on and off. This goes for off the sidewall, off the backboard, and really anywhere you can. Number eight, always keep your net in front of your car on defense. For whatever reason, low ranked players often like to defend from inside of their net or in the middle of the net. The truth is though, it's way easier to play defense if you avoid creeping into the middle of your net and you try to stay on the far post away from the ball whenever possible. This is because it's so much easier to react to a ball hit in front of you than one behind. And plus, you always want to be able to access the backboard and actually save the ball with momentum when possible. You're going to find it much easier to play defense and you're going to get scored on way less that way. Number nine, always look for demos while you rotate out. This is primarily a 2v2 and 3v3 tip that mainly occurs in the corner. Especially with where the meta is moving, the more you can look for demos while you rotate across the field, especially immediately after you finish making your play on the ball, the more impact you're actually going to be able to have on your games and the easier winning will actually become. Number 10, stay moving at midfield. When you're waiting on corner boost, it's pretty easy to see most of the field, but something I've noticed is that low rank players tend to slow down around the middle of the field, which is actually the most dangerous place to get demoed. As a general rule, while you're rotating up or down the field or across the field and you're moving anywhere through the center, you want to constantly be staying moving. Otherwise, you'll be an easy target for demos and you'll get picked off in a lot of plays before you even realize it. 11. Follow the 70% rule on offense. 70% rule or the 70-30 rule basically states when you're waiting for a center ball, you only want to move 70% of the distance to where you think the ball's going to come and no further. This is because when you actually go for the shot on the center, you want to make sure you can get a running start. And the problem a lot of lower rank players get into is just creeping up way too far on offense and then the center ball comes behind them or over their head and they can't get a powerful shot on net. Number 12, always cheat on kickoffs. Of course, sometimes you'll cheat up and the ball will get sent behind you. But in general, it is a more winning strategy to cheat up on kickoffs in 2v2 and 3v3 than not. Yes, it's nice to have every play with 100 boost, but being the first team to get possession after the kickoff is just more valuable than being the team with the most boost. So whether you're playing 2v2 or 3v3, you generally want to have one person cheat up to the kickoff at all times. Number 13, dribble the ball on angles. Once you start to get good ball control, a lot of players get in the habit of taking the ball to try to flick every time and just gunning straight down the center of the field as quick as possible. The problem is when you dribble the ball in a straight line on top of your car, it's harder to see when somebody's going to challenge you and it's harder to get direction change on your flicks. Instead, in general, you want to dribble the ball on an angle. That way you can see them challenging and you're able to get direction change as well as height change on your flicks. At the end of the day, you'll still have to time the flick properly, but this will make it a lot easier to see people challenging you. And especially if you find you're getting dunked a lot, try this out and it should help a ton in your games. Number 14, make your first touch away from the opponent. You want to avoid making a first touch directly at the opposing team whenever possible. If there's space to, it's usually better to take the ball across the field or play it to empty space rather than just moving it straight down the center of the field. This is because the further you play the ball away from the opponent, the more time you'll have to get behind it and properly time a second touch for a cut or an outplay. I won't drill this one too much because it goes a lot with the previous tip, but make your first touch on an angle away from the opponent whenever possible. Number 15, if nobody's covering the backboard, hit it above the net. Below the champ ranks, players just aren't going to cover their backboards very much, if at all. So basically, if you ever see somebody's backboard uncovered, think about when you can hit the ball off the top of their backboard as opposed to just shooting it on net. That way you can get the ball back, you put your opponent in a really awkward situation, and you'll just create a ton of free goals on people who panic and try to make the save anyway. Number 16, play behind 
not to the side. This is basically a tip that applies whenever your teammate's controlling a dribble and is moving the ball up the field. The mistake I see a lot of low rank players is position upfield for a pass or across the field on the opposite side, hoping their teammate is gonna hit them. From what I've seen at least, you're gonna get much better results in game if instead of positioning to the side while your teammate dribbles, you just get behind them and cover the worst case scenario. It's much better to play safe and cautious at most ranks than play upfield and risky for the passes. Number 17, never boost at supersonic. For those of you who don't know, you can maintain supersonic speed once you get it by simply holding accelerate. Yet for some reason, and I think it's just because it's hard to notice, tons of people, even through the grand champ ranks, will continue to burn boost while they're already going at max speed. Obviously this is wasteful, so I won't dwell on it, but in general, never boost at supersonic. Number 18, bounce dribbles are greater than flicks. This is less of a rule, but more just personal opinion from what I've seen coaching. Most lower rank players learn flicks first, and so almost everyone who's defending you is gonna be expecting them. Yet in many cases, especially when you have space in the middle of the field and somebody's not shadowing you close enough, a simple bounce dribble and a power slide cut are gonna be much harder to defend, but they also have the added bonus of committing you less than a flick does. Usually, if you fail a flick, you're going to end up dead in the middle of your opponent's net. Take a look at your gameplay and try to find moments where you could implement bounce dribbles over flicks, and you should see some pretty quick results. Number 19, avoid flipping in your opponent's corner. This is basically a mistake I see a lot of lower rank players make where they think it's good to just slam the ball off the corner and hope it recenters to your teammate. The problem is most times when you just slam the ball off your opponent's corner, the opponents are gonna be there more than your teammate is. Try to pass the ball without flipping into the corner, emphasize back passes and things like that more, and avoid getting caught going for deep 50-50s in your opponent's corner because most times it's not going to work out and you're just going to get scored on on a breakaway. Finally, tip number 20, never fly somewhere you could drive. Basically, what this rule states is that whenever the ball's in the air or moving high across the field, you want to avoid jumping until the last possible second. The problem is when you jump the minute the ball goes into the air, you're going to be much less boost efficient and you're going to be fully committed the minute you take off. If instead, however, you stay grounded for as long as possible before jumping for a ball, you're going to have the most time to change your decision, take in more information, and react and just adjust quicker in general on the ground. You'll save way more boost, commit way less, and overall win more games if you can avoid your instinct of pre-jumping for every ball. Whew. Okay, so that was 20 Rocket League rules you should probably be implementing in your games. As always, thank you so much for watching. DM me down below on Discord if you're interested in coaching, or if you just like free stuff, you can join and lurk around as well. I'm off for now, but I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace, guys.